This video is sponsored by Wingwing Technology, your ultimate flight sim hardware solution. Featuring the Orion Holtes, current and future configurations. Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're looking at the Mosquito FB Mark VI module in DCS World and we're going to do the buyer's guide slash product review of it. The first thing to say is it is November 2021 when we're doing this. It's in early access. There's a few more features and a few more changes that will happen to it over the next few months. But the main base of the module is in. Secondly, I apologize for my voice. I've got a cold at the moment, but I really want to get this done. So let's just push on. We're going to split today's buyer's guide into seven categories. One, capabilities of the aircraft in DCS. Let's look at the weapons, let's look at the navigation methods, let's look at the multi-crew and so on. Two, visual effects inside and outside of the aircraft. We'll rate this between one and five. One being bad, five being the best. These ratings will then apply to a final score which we'll talk about at the end. Next, sound effects inside and outside. How do we rate them between one and five? Next, interactivity in detail. How or what percentage of the instruments in the cockpit are interactive and the systems behind them modelled and so on between one and five. Next, flight model. Not necessarily how realistic the flight model is. In DCS World we just expect all of the flight models to be realistic. That's a given. They have to go through a certification process. I'm a bit more interested in how immersive the flight model is how it makes me feel as a virtual pilot on a computer that i am flying the real mosquito does it have weight does it have the feeling of inertia model just shakiness stuff like that next difficulty between one and five one being a very easy aircraft five being uh, an a10c or something like that then a final summary and then we'll wrap it up. Just to note that all of these ratings will then go through to this spreadsheet here, which you will have access to. You'll have a link in the video description. This is where we rate all of the aircraft in DCS on these same comparable metrics to remove the bias from it. It's not just me. It's all or most of the Grim Reapers that do it. So you can get the most honest and non-biased opinion of all of the modules in DCS and we keep this up to date based on you know new features that come out and so on. So let's get cracking. We've got RC here with us today. Say hello RC. Hello. Welcome into the cockpit of the Mosquito. It's a lovely place to be and it's nice and spacious. So first, how do we interact with the cockpit? We can either do it as the pilot, we're in single player at the moment, and you will require to also access the various things in the cockpit from the navigator's position. To do that we press 2 and we're in the navigator's position. For instance, these radio sets back here can only be manipulated by the navigator. Then I can go back with one to the pilot. If you're in multiplayer but you're the only human in the aircraft, you can also still do this. Swap between the seats to access the different controls. This is something, like I said, you'll have to get used to doing. Also, in multiplayer, you can have two humans. You could have one human flying here and one human being the navigator and accessing the various navigators, switches and controls. In terms of weapons, probably the ultimate and best thing about the Mossy is, of course, that with the engines moved from the fuselage, we have loads of room for guns in the front of the fuselage. We've got four 303 machine guns and four 20 mil cannon so that's eight guns up front all on the center line of the aircraft so we don't have to worry about conversions making it extremely awesome gun platform one thing to note is there's a small delay between pressing the triggers and the guns firing you just have to take my word for it about a quarter of a second it's just something you have to get used to. In terms of types of ammunition, I'm not going to go through all of these, but you've got all these different ammo types that you can choose, and their effects are modelled to some degree. Also, we have two wing stations and two bomb bay stations. On the wing stations, we can have that array of bombs. Size of bomb or weight of bomb. General purpose. MC, think medium capacity. Uh, short tail is a shortened bomb to fit in the bomb bay. And semi-armour piercing droppable fuel tanks, 100 gallon, 50 gallon, and in the bomb bay, a slightly reduced load. There will be a type of rocket also added later in early access. It does not say in any of the ED text which rockets it's gonna be, so we'll find out when they arrive. Next, navigation and communication. Main comms 
are going to be done by this guy here. A TR, transmit, receive, 1143 with programmable radio stations. Plus an extra one for base, and we'll come back to that. We also have the big sets. These are transmitter, a T1154, all fully configurable and modeled to a massively high degree. And when I say that, I mean like higher than you would ever need. It's really good stuff. We also have the receiver, the R1155, again, massively over modeled to what you're ever going to need. Really good stuff, and highly modeled. And I've got various tutorials showing how to use them in configuration with this guy here for navigation and communication. In terms of navigation instrumentation driven off these radios, we've got our homing indicator here. I've got a video on that. We've got our basic magnetic compass down here pretty hard to use to be honest but well modeled we've got our magnetic compass repeater here with core set which will be used in collaboration with our beam approach system this is a system kind of similar to like an early ILS type system which can get you on the radial of a runway using radio audio device you would turn that on there again fully covered in a video that we've done and of course we've got a trusty old directional gyro here that is obviously to be used in collaboration with our magnetic compass finally map navigation currently not in the module but I think I've not heard this officially but I think what's going to happen is the navigator will have access to these maps down here you'll actually be able to kind of bring them out maybe in 3d I'm not sure a mark on the maps where they're traveling again that's not official it's just what I've heard through the grapevine so we'll see and hopefully that will materialize finally in terms of capabilities I should mention as well there's lots of interior and exterior lighting that you can play around with this and uh, this is a fancy thing this is our I don't actually know what the name of it is I call it a Morse identifier but you can turn on various lights either above or below the aircraft in different colors and tap out codes to identify that you are a friendly aircraft so I would include that in the capabilities also next visuals we'll first look inside then we'll look outside the best thing I could do is just pan the camera around and show you everything in HD first of all my thoughts in terms of texture and modeling quality it's 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 right up there with the modules from 2021 from ED absolutely top-notch I do have one complaint with this aircraft and that it is very dark so I am at what I call the normal for me which is what I run all my aircraft in gamma 1.5 we'll all have different gamma settings depending on our PCs our graphics cards and stuff for me 1.5 is average for this aircraft 1.5 and this only applies to this aircraft it's too dark I struggle to see all this stuff with my eyes so often when I fly this aircraft always when I fly this aircraft I have to turn the camera up like I said it's the only aircraft I in DTS I have to do this with I consider a fault because I think the cockpit should work on my normal settings that all the other aircraft do. And I don't like finding faults in this. I like this aircraft a lot, believe me. But it's something I have to point out. I'll see if you've got any thoughts or come back on that. The whole cockpit's black anyways, so when you're in the dark, it's a little darker to read. But I can read everything fine, and when you're in the sun, it looks really good. What I'm going to do now, Valley Views, is just spend five minutes panning around the cockpit. So you can see the quality, the mesh fineness and the texture detail obviously every time an aircraft module comes out in DCS the quality goes up and we're in the 2021 level details of course because our graphics cards are getting better our computers are getting better so it is what I would say the quality that you would expect in late 2021 which is of course when it's come out I think you call it 4k texture don't you maybe I've got that wrong oh yeah. I think they call it 4K. I, I might have that wrong, so I don't know. Not sure. One complaint I've got, this is not anyone's fault, but this is how the real aircraft is. The VSI, which is an incredibly important IFR tool for any aircraft, is behind there. Something you need to see, and it's unviewable, basically. I mean, that, you'd have to fly like that to see it, which you can't do, obviously. There you go. <laughs> I think I've just broken something. I knew I shouldn't click things. Would you break? I just broken something. <laughs> Gonna go through to the other guy. Have a quick look around here. All super modelled, as you can see. 
Yes, I've been told 4K textures is correct. Okay, that gives you a feel for the inside. As you can see, the textures don't break up until you really zoom in on them, which you, you wouldn't really do anyway. But then you get a tiny bit of breakup, but it's still, you know, it's as it's, it's, it's good as you're going to want them. Um, you've got this cool little hatch here, by the way, if I can get it to work. Hey, or you can open it non-emergency style. Let's go and have a look at the outside. How late you can see his legs? Ha <laughs> ha, that's so funny. Again, rather than me rabbiting on, I will turn back to normal. So it's annoying because when you go to the outside here, you have to turn it back. It's just the cockpit that's really dark for me. Um, make if you will of the exterior model. I would just describe it as I wouldn't describe it as groundbreaking. Um, I would describe it as what's expected now of a module in late 2021. You know, it's high mesh details, you can see there, hundreds of polygons making all these linkages and assemblies with a 4K texture and the tyres and everything. It's just what's expected now. If you pay uh, $50 or so, whatever it is, costs at the moment to make this video. The uh, Those um, flames look really good at night. Great pile of detail. The, the viewers on the stream are saying that you should use the UV lamps within the cockpit, even in the daytime. I'm not sure. Um, surely they wouldn't have done that in real life, though. I know how fragile the UV lamps were. Yeah, I, I, I can't believe they would have used out. them in the daytime in real life. I think that rudder's moving a bit jerky, that's just my pedals are broken. See the trim tabs model there. A distinct lack of liveries at the time um, in early access, however I have no doubt the kind of guys that have made this will add loads of liveries as time goes on so I'm not too worried about that. So far it's got a pretty decent visual damage model, we've shot plenty of these down and various bits fall off them, I haven't noticed anything, you know, stupidly not working or anything at the moment, so... Uh, actually we have seen uh, multiple tails, there's an annoying thing with uh, warbirds at the moment of making this video, oh, yeah. where if you shoot it, the tail falls off like five times. It's the same with all of the warbirds, I think, at DCS at the moment. It's obviously going to be fixed, but just bear in mind that is a point thing at the moment. Okay, I'll see. We have to now um, put the visuals between 1 and 5. Sorry, we're taking our time, but I would have thought you would like to, you know, the time to look around anywhere with me. Between 1 and 5, where 1 is, you know, an old, um, I don't know, an old module, like the original Black Shark or something, where 5 is like the Tomcat, generally accepted as the best looking thing in terms of mesh details and stuff like that. I would put this as a four and a half. Cop apart from its darkness, I'm going to ignore the darkness in the uh, rating because I accept it may just be something to do with me. I would say the cockpit is a five and I would say the body is a four. As in the cockpit, you know, the quality of the textures and stuff is about as good as you can get as far as I'm concerned. The body, it's, I don't think it's, it's as good as you can get. I would not rate that as high as maybe a Harrier or a, a Tomcat or a Hornet. Um, but it's good, it's decent, it's what you'd expect otherwise, so it's up to scratch. Uh, so that's a four, and I would say four and a half in total. I'm getting ratings of four out of five from the stream. What's your overall score, RC? I would say the exterior is probably a four and a half, and the interior is going to be a five. They did a really good job. It's a 4.75 for you. Right, we're going to move on to sounds. Next, sound effects. We're going to look at engine sounds, at weapon sounds, a ground rumble. Uh, G sounds, uh, alpha sounds, angle of attack sounds, uh, services sounds, and the overall mix. It's our general way we've got of empirically quantifying how good a sound model in an aircraft is, and we've done it quite a lot now, we're quite good at it. First of all, you, you can open um, stuff, windows and stuff, and it will get louder. Engine from inside, just do it here for now. As 
that's me as a virtual pilot, what's really important there? I, the importance is I can hear the RPM of the engines. Can I hear that? Yes, I can. Can I hear if they're struggling or they're spluttering? I can't show you it now, but yes, I can. If they get shot, can I hear it, the difference? Yes, I can. Those are the good things for me. Let's have a look outside. Lovely backfire sound. <laughs> I've broken one of my engines. I've overheated one of my engines. It doesn't matter. I'm not, I'm not going to fly at the moment. In terms of engines, I think it's got everything there. It's, I mean, obviously, I don't know what a real mosquito sounds like, but it, it gives me all of the feedback I know. Uh, next, weapons inside. We can do some guns. Do some cannon. Outside. I think that's the same sound effect inside and outside. Sounds pretty awesome. I mean, how much better do you want a cannon to sound? Uh, we've done bombs. I'll see if you tried the bombs. There's no kind of um, big cartoony bomb release sound effect, but you can hear it, kind of the mechanism clicking, and that's what you want. You want to know that bomb's dropped, so you've got that there in the mix, which is good. Next, we want to look at the ground rumble. Do we get the sound of the tyres rumbling on the concrete, or tarmac, whatever? It's the only way I know that I'm making contact with the ground. A real pilot can feel it through his butt, obviously, but I can't do that in a game, so let's go and have a play. If we can remember how to take off. Listen for any ground rumble, any basic ground rumble, which is what we want. there but it was really low in the mix I've never listened to it before uh, I think there was some ground rumble but it was really low in the mix I was a little bit disappointed with that actually next we're gonna try services so that is gear coming up stuff like that can I hear things happening so uh, gear up I could hear the handle going up and down, but I couldn't hear the actual gear going up and down. Any thunking or anything like that that tells me the gear. Let me know what you think of that one, RC. I'm going to try flaps next. I'm also going to try gear with the engine turned down. No obvious flaps. Gear down. I can't hear anything apart from the lever. Uh, it's a bit disappointing, but that's how it is. Let's try Bombay. I can't hear anything, again, apart from the lever. can't hear any mechanisms, can't hear any thunking. Personally, I would have thought with these great big mechanisms and assemblies throwing themselves about, I would expect the whole frame of the aircraft to go doosh like that, um, which would have to be transmitted to me in sound, obviously. So that's a bit disappointing, but it is what it is. And also remember it's early access. Next, I'm going to test the manoeuvring sounds. The only way this thing can translate to me that we're pulling out angle of attack and or we're pulling G's is that things might vibrate and I'll get the sound. It's very important. They are A, there, B, correct in the mix with the sounds of the engines and stuff. So let's give that a go. Let's get everything back into flight configuration. Flaps up. Gear up. Bombay up. Oh, 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 oh. Never happened. A minor problem with the airfoil valid viewers, standby. Get to test that ground rumble again. No, 
again, I couldn't hear any ground rumble. Let me know what you guys think. Okay, we've got 220 miles an hour now. Lots of cockpit shaking, which is nice. No sounds. No buffet sounds of the wings. So I've worked it into a full stall there, and I had, as far as I can tell, no sounds of the high angle of attack. The wing struggling with the high angle of attack. Uh, I probably wasn't pulling many Gs, to be honest, so I wouldn't expect any real G sound at the speeds we were going. But I would personally, I'm not a pilot, but expect, if not real sounds, then at least a simulation sound to simulate the wing struggling, vibrating, everything vibrating. So good vibration in the cockpit, sounds, as far as I can see, not there. Can you... Confirm that, RC, or give me any push. Yeah, on I was that. flying too, and I can't hear anything. No, again, that is what a virtual pilot needs. And don't take my word for it. This comes from real pilots that fly with us, and I'm just putting it out there. All we've got now is the mix, how all the things we've tested mix in with the engine sound so that you can hear everything. Some planes are really good. F-16 is my favorite because all those sounds are in there, and they're beautiful. Uh, Lee mixed. A bad one would be... A MiG-19 or something where you just can't hear anything because all the sounds levels are all messed up. This, unfortunately, there just aren't really any sounds. There's the engine, there's the weapon. That sounds great. The ground rumble, I just can't hear. The alpha, I just can't hear. The services don't seem to be there. And therefore, there, there isn't really any mix. So it's the first time I've looked at this properly, actually. But the, the mix doesn't seem to be finished yet. There's a lot of stuff missing. Knowing indeed they will add it in because all of the aircraft have this. You know, I've been doing this for five or six years now. And there are none of the aircraft that I can think of that don't have these various sounds. So they're probably just not in yet, but that is unfortunate. Let's do a flyby. If I can recover this, let's do a flyby and check exterior sounds when flying, and then I think we're done. Lovely. Again, I've never seen a real mosquito and I'll never know what one sounds like, but it sounds perfectly, perfectly good to me. So, RC, we now need to give the sounds an overall rating between one and five and all of that together with the missing bits. For me, it's going to have to be a three. The sounds that are there are very good. Engine's good, weapons are good and checked. Flight sounds aren't there. My ground rumble's there, not there or it's too low. My services sounds are there and, and they're not. So the heights, the PS, the pneumatics are there but i can't hear any of my moving bits otherwise so they're not there so what's there is good but it's missing load so it's a three out of five uh it's the same for me three because it's a it's a work in progress but it's just not quite there yet absolutely and again we'll get these things updated the scores update we may not update the videos as things go on because we've got so many to maintain but what we will do is update the scores on the sheet that you'll see in the video description and that will be kept dynamic and updated. So uh, that's the important thing. Stand by. Next, interactivity and detail. Score between one and five. What we mean is how many of the buttons and controls and stuff like that are modelled and the systems behind them to some degree modelled. So an example. An F-15 in DCS at the time of making this has almost no interactivity in the cockpit. You can't click any of the buttons or anything like that. Therefore, it's a one out of five. An A-10C has loads of buttons, it's really well modelled over many years of construction of the A10C and just about everything in there is modelled. And you have to obviously base it upon the time period and whatnot of the aircraft in question. You can't compare this to an A10C in terms of systems. So, everything we've got here, you'll be really happy to know, it's pretty much there and modelled. I can't think of any switches I can't press, apart from things like, like this. This controls, this is the taco for the video camera because there will be a nose gun camera obviously it's just not modern dcs maybe it will be one day but it's not at the moment now we can't score it down for that because they just don't have video cameras in, D in gun cams and dcs yet all of these gauges everything's checked to model because we did the full um uh video checking the cockpit out all these triggers guns buttons that you can press uh, the controls all these levers uh engine stuff all this stuff down here. I can't think of anything that's not modelled, even the IFF lights. Engine stuff. You've got various tanks and wings and stuff like that that you can transfer fuel from here to there. It's all a bit beyond me, to be honest, but all that's there. It's in. It's modelled. The, the uh, co uh, co 
uh, what's the word? Consequences. Consequences. The consequences of you know mismanaging your fuel or, or pressures or whatever is there from what we can see. Um, stuff down here with the fuel modelled radios modelled way beyond what anyone would ever use as far as I can see. Lights. Sorry, I don't know what that sound is. Can you think of any reason in here in terms of interactivity, pressing things, doing things, anything that doesn't work that you'd expect to work and any reason not to vote it 5 out of 5? I'll see. No. It's, I would give it a 5. Yeah, well done. Uh, the guys who worked on the cockpit um, just done a good job. Simple as that. Welcome back. Next, flight model. Uh, this is never an easy thing to do because I've never flown a real mosquito. I don't suppose anyone that's ever going to fly this in DTS has ever flown a mosquito. So no one can make a true comparison, I shouldn't imagine. So in terms of how realistic it is, I've got nothing useful to say. I've only flown a plane in real life for 30 seconds and I'm simply not qualified to talk about whether this is realistic or not. What I'm going to aim at more is, is it immersive in that, the way it reacts in the air in DCS, does it make me and RC, who are very experienced virtual pilots for warbirds and whatnot, is it immersive enough that it fools us into thinking that we're flying an aircraft? Or is it going to be like some of the aircraft in DTS where you kind of think you're flying a spaceship? Not many nowadays, actually. Most of them are pretty top-notch. But, you know, that's it. Can it fool my experienced brain into thinking this is a real aircraft? That's more what we're looking at, as well as its foibles, its good parts, and its bad parts. So, I guess we just get on with it. Off we go again. First thing I would describe, fellow viewers, is it's not a particularly easy plane to fly. It is has a certain amount of instability in it. Again, is it realistic or not? I've got no way of quantifying that or telling you whether it's realistic or not. But it's not certainly not as stable as some of the other warbirds in DCS. Personally, I thought it would have been because it's a big, much bigger, heavier aircraft. But, again, I can't really tell you, yes or no. So first of all, look at this regime here. We're very low speed at the moment and any aircraft is unstable at this speed I'm 112 knots I'm at a high angle of attack as you can see the plane's relatively heavy it's unstable at this point does the flight model convey that through its cockpit shaking through the movements in which the aircraft does to a relatively experienced pilot yes it does that perfectly it, 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 I know the sounds aren't there but it, I can feel the thing juddering about I can feel it swishing left and right slightly it's not quite right and that's, that's a good start it's conveying that it's, there's instability. And there's quite a lot of instability at low speed on this aircraft. Let me unpause now, try not to crash. See me having to work with the stick until I'm there. We're now, angle of attack is down, speed is up, and now she feels stable. And the things she's doing tells me that it's stable. Get my gear up quickly. Okay, let's get some speed under the bonnet. On most planes, the faster she goes, the more stable she's going to get. We've had this said many times, there is some, a certain amount of pitch, tail heaviness and instability in the pitch. I would agree with that. Um, I've got no real way of conveying it to you. It's just a feel thing, a human feels it. Again, is that realistic or not? I've got no way of knowing. But that is something that's in there. In terms of comparing it to something like a P-47, an incredibly stable gun platform, I don't find this as stable. And I remember this, this is supposed to be a very stable gun platform in real life. Whereas I, I could uh, line up on an, a ground target in a P-47 very easily at various settings at various speeds. Whereas the Mosquito, I find it much more, hmm, I guess dynamic is the word, but there's a lot more things going on and I don't find it as stable at the moment. You saw that blipping there, that was the engine's carburetor based of course, so it's modelled if we go into negative G, they will start cutting out, reducing power and whatnot. I know I haven't got my trim and everything set up at the moment, but you can just trust me by feel that it is a little bit skittish, especially in the pitch, uh, which is just something to note. In terms of harsh manoeuvres and dogfighting, I'm just trying to quantify it, maybe compared with other aircraft. If you take something like a Spitfire in DCS, I don't know about real life, but in DCS, it's very hard to move the Spitfire on the ground but once it's airborne, very easy to fly, very easy to dogfight. Probably the easiest aircraft to dogfight. It requires the least skill, the least practice, the least understanding. Uh, very hard to stall uh, a Spitfire, very hard to crash a Spitfire. 
This is kind of along the opposite spectrum. It's going to require a lot more skill in harsh maneuvers in a dogfight and whatnot to keep it airborne and to use it usefully in a dogfight. Is it a good dogfighter? No idea. Probably not. I don't know, but that doesn't really matter. But just bear in mind, again, we're along the idea here. There's, it's very dynamic. It's going to be very easy to stall, especially with its kind of lack of sounds that we're feeling at the moment. Uh, and it's going to require more understanding. Now, I'm not saying that that's a bad thing at all because most of you out there who are experienced virtual pilots want the challenge. Myself and RC have been doing this for five or six years now, and we're bored of flying Flaming Cliffs 3 F-15s, you know. We want something that's hard work, that requires lots of thought, and it's difficult to fly, and this, this fills that bracket quite nicely, I think. In terms of overall immersiveness, I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good. Again, I, nothing to compare to in real life that I, that I understand about this aircraft, but it does make me think that I'm in a warbird. It does. It's, it, it is still tra telling me and giving me plenty of feedback when I am in trouble, although I really want that sound engine improved, obviously. Uh, no, I think you pretty much covered it. It's definitely can be unstable and difficult to fly, but it's it's fun. We're all into simulators for different reasons, but fun is the, is the top one for me. Okay, we've got to quantify that somehow. I know it's hard to do, but I'm going to say a 4 out of 5 because there's a lot of good stuff there. It's not easy, but I'm not rating it down for being hard. It's it's uh, you know it's like the MiG-21. It's probably one of the hardest but most rewarding planes to find DCS. It's hard as a challenge, but there are some instability things that can be a bit annoying. And Oh, and we're still lacking the sound engine for the harsh maneuvers. Uh, I'm going to give it a 4 as well. Okay, I think we're pretty well aligned on this. Um, yeah. That's it. Next, difficulty between one and five. One is an FC3 plane, a flanker, an F-15. You can watch two or three tutorials and you can pretty much master it from there. It's easy. Uh, in terms of the plane and the systems, tactics is different, obviously, but yeah. Uh, five out of ten would be an A10C2. It requires tens or hundreds of hours of learning and reading and watching videos and stuff. It takes a long time to learn. Very rewarding when you do it but it's difficult. You guys ask us, how hard is this? Well, they're split into two things. One, how hard is it to learn the systems? Two, how hard is it to fly? Systems, as long as you've got an understanding of warbirds and how they work and engine temperatures and radiators and stuff like that, you do need to know about that stuff. So for instance, you can't just get in this plane, put the throttle forward like you can in an F-15 and take off. Your engine will last two minutes and you'll die and you'll get frustrated. So it's not that level of easiness. You've got to have a base understanding of warbird aviation, how to maintain engines. So assuming you've got that, it's easy. In terms of uh, systems for dropping bombs and firing guns, there's nothing to it. You press a switch here, you, you drop the bomb and that's it. Jettison and stuff like that, easy. Um, working radios is not particularly easy, but that's a bit out of the scope of what I'm interested in. I just want main flying the plane, dropping the bombs, completing a mission. Flying the plane, I would say it's not easy. Let me put all that together. I would say that uh, the systems in the aircraft, three out of five, because you've really got to know your systems, engines and stuff like that. Otherwise, it's okay. Flying the plane's going to be a four out of five. It's just not a particularly easy warbird, not particularly forgiving, and you can get into trouble if you don't know what you're doing. Give me a total of 3.5 of difficulty out of five. RC, send. For difficulty, I give it a four. Mm -hmm. Which leads us to our summary. Here is our sheet. There is myself and RC filled out. Note that we retain the right to change this at any point. You know, we've done these scores live. We may reconsider if we have a chat behind the scenes or also the other guys will add their scores once we dish this out. So by the time you see this, this should hopefully be populated. Visual effects, sound effects, interactivity, detail and flight model out of 20. Go there. This is not taken into the score because difficulty is neither good nor bad. It's just whatever it is. This score for myself and RC is scored 16.5 to 16.75 out of 20. It's, it's good. One of the best warbirds, if not the best warbird, actually. I think the next best is 16 or something like that. So overall, it's done really well. On the face of it, that's probably what you'd agree with. It's probably the best looking out of all the ones out there. Maybe similar to the Jug. It's, it's flight model's decent. It's interactive. It is second to none, I'd probably say, for a warbird. And in terms of otherwise, my advice for do you buy it or not, I personally wouldn't make it my first warbird. I would go and get the Spit. I would go and get the Mustang. Because... It's just not an easy simulator to get into DCS, and that's just an easier way of doing it. As your second warbird, or onwards, absolutely, I would add it in there. Bear in mind, obviously, at the moment, it is massive disclaimer, early access. You know, it's not finished yet. But you can get a pretty good taste of where it's going to be. And as long as you've got a bit of experience in warbirds, I guarantee you'll have fun in it. I pay my money for my uh, aircraft just like you guys do, and that gives me the right to complain if I don't like it. And I like this one. I'm happy where my money went. Anything to add to that, I'll see. Nothing to add. Hope you enjoyed that, guys. And we'll see you for the next plane.